Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm Dr. David Harris. <laughs> PhD, PE, FACE, FSCEI. I said that last one wrong. Fellow fellow, that's close enough. He's a fellow squared. <laughs> one heck of a fellow. So today, David and I are going to go over one of the most controversial tests in the concrete industry. I even think the Kardashians <laughs> talked about this. The Kardashians, or am I saying the name wrong? I think it's Kardashians. I don't know, but this is the, one of the most controversial tests in the concrete industry. ASTMC 143, the concrete slump test. Ba -ba -ba -bom. Concrete slump test. We have a slump cone. It's bigger at the bottom, smaller at the top. Four, four inches up top, eight inches on the bottom, and I believe there's somewhere around 12 inches in between, but I could be wrong. It's 12 inches high. Okay. We've got the two tabs that put your boots on, so as you're pouring concrete into it, it goes all over your boots. And we've got the tamping rod. We use ASTM C143, raised in three lifts, as, as described right. in 143. We're not going to make any attempt to teach you the procedure. We're not ACI technician certification. We just want to give you the idea of the test and then go on about how it's used and why it's used and why some people hate it. Um, so you fill it up, um, you pull it off at a known speed. Three to seven seconds. Three to seven seconds. No lateral deformation. It, you have concrete in there like when you were at the beach when you were a kid. It can go down some, it can go down a lot. The distance from what used to be the top to where it currently is, is the slump. So that displaced center, the height of the displaced center is that slump. And we, we have the means of doing it for not only concrete, but we also have our own in-house version for mortar and grout. Right. And it is what I believe a great test. Now, before we get into why I think it's a great test, um, let's discuss what we are measuring. And I think this was mine. Okay. So what we are measuring from this standard operating procedure is the workability or this fresh property, plastic property, or liquid property of our concrete. So if a concrete is stiffer, when you pull the slump cone up in that three to five seconds, it's not going to move as much. So when you measure that displaced center, it might be a half an inch, one inch, maybe two inch. Something that is more fluid, like a self-consolidated concrete or a high slump concrete, when you pull that same slump cone, that display center is going to be a lot lower, meaning it's going to be a lot more fluid. Right. What are we not measuring? Well, you may have heard us before, I'm the stress train guy. You're the stress train I'm guy. I'm the stress train guy. It used to be back in the last century, a lot of people thought we were measuring zero hour strength. That, you know, if it slumped less, it was stronger. Folks, I'm here to tell you that's that's just not the case. That that that's from last century folklore. It's not it's not the way it is. And I, I agree with you. Last century, you know, ninety five percent of our ready mix providers, you know, especially early in the last century, were not using admixtures. They were right. using water. So saying slump was connected to your water cementitious ratio, even though that you can't do that, you might have been closer to that concept than we are today. Yeah, that's fair. I mean if you're sand, gravel, cement, water, all equal. then there's a bit of a correlation. Right. But as you add all these new admixtures and these um, you know, things that improve and make different properties, uh, there's not an A to B comparison like there used to be. So if we are considering that the slump cone measures the workability, the fluid property of the concrete, then the question is why do people hate it so much? Well, it is well, it is messy. <laughs> it is messy. What I've seen in the industry is the complaint that you have five people do the same test on the same concrete at the same time, and you'll come up with five different results. Folks, I'm here to tell you that is not the function of the test. That is what we like to call in the industry operator error. If those five people are getting five different results, more than likely, something went wrong in the entire process, that somebody is operating that procedure incorrectly 
Was it sampled incorrectly? Was it done at the right time? Is there something different? There are very specific parts of this procedure, like wetting down the cone, right. or using a non-absorbent surface and wetting down the surface and using a tamping rod. Cor or, correctly. Or it, using it correctly, three lifts, 25 rods, and if you even do the rotting differently, if you're stirring it instead of rotting it, you're going to get a different result. So that's why I believe people dislike or hate this test. Yeah, I mean, the whole idea of rotting is one, one per square inch. Right. So we're supposed to get a nice uniform right. uh, coverage. You, know, you can tamp in, you can tamp out. But the idea is to get that uniform coverage. So you're right. I mean, five people are going to get uh, five different numbers. But we know there's material variation in everything. Everything. I mean, we can't expect to get five exact same numbers. This is assuming it's all coming from the same truck. Well, there's that. Yeah. Right. It's, you know, there's that. So there's going to be some variation, even in a perfect situation. Now, the reason why I say you should love it. <laughs> you yeah. should love it. I, I grew up in the field. Right. I did not start in a beautiful laboratory like this. I started making and breaking concrete for the sake of sales. You know, rapid deployment, getting great concrete down the chute. So this was a test that I had to rely on as one part in a larger series of tests. And that's what I f think people forget. A lot of folks hang their hat on one test, and when that one test gives them bad information, they start complaining about it. And the fact remains is the slump test is one part of five tests that's used out in the field. You have slump, unit weight, air content, temperature, and then of course, this might not be a test, but it's your batch weights. Right. And assuming that everything is done right, let's say you have a concrete mix and the slump that you get is tighter than it should be, the air is lower, the unit weight is higher, the temperature is higher, and then if you look on the batch weight, it looks like they put a little bit too much cement and not enough water. Right. So, I mean, all that information put together gives you a real answer. Using the slump cone by itself or any other test, by itself is not going to give you realistic information of what's going on and how do you address those problems. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when I've got my hard hat on, I've got my clipboard there, and I have to check a box that says acceptable, or X a box that says not acceptable, I can't wait three days, I can't wait seven days, I can't wait 28 days, but particularly if I'm building a dam, 28 days later, it's going to be too late. It's going to be buried 20 or 30 feet. So I've got to have something there on the job site for accept, not accept. See, I would have painted the picture as wheelbarrow with thermometer in the wheelbarrow and me pulling slump. You painted the picture of being the engineer. Right. So that's perfect. That That's <laughs> David's role, the engineer's role, and the technician's role in using the slump cone. Both of us, it's a key piece of information. And there are other methods out there, yeah. but I really think we've got two powerhouse tests here that really should be used throughout, in my opinion, because they do great things for us on the job site. Absolutely. You've got to have some way to know if what you're putting down is what, what you're going to want in the future. Amen. Amen. So thanks for joining us today. We wanted to get out to you what we thought about the slum <laughs> test. I don't know. Do you like it or do you dislike it? Got to have it. Got to have it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comments, concerns. If you have any questions, we are the concrete experts. Go concrete. Beat asphalt. <laughs>